Stephen Hawking biography Stephen William Hawking the 8th of January 1942 to the 14th of March 2018 was an English theoretical physicist cosmologist author and director of research at the Center for Theoretical Cosmology within the University of Cambridge his scientific works included a collaboration with Roger Penrose on gravitational singularity theorems in the framework of general relativity and the theoretical prediction that black holes emit radiation. Often called Hawking radiation, Hawking was the first to set out a theory of cosmology explained by a union of the general theory of relativity and quantum mechanics. He was a vigorous supporter of the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. Hawking was an honorary fellow of the Royal Society of Arts, FRSA, a lifetime member of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, and a recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award in the United States. In 2002, Hawking was ranked number 25 in the BBC's poll of the 100 Greatest Britons. He was the Lucasian Professor of Mathematics at the University of Cambridge between 1979 and 2009 and achieved commercial success with works of popular science in which he discusses his own theories and cosmology in general. His book, A Brief History of Time, appeared on the British Sunday Times bestseller list for a record-breaking 237 weeks. Hawking had a rare early onset slow progressing form of motor neurone disease, also known as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or ALS, and Lou Gehrig's disease, that gradually paralyzed him over the decades. Even after the loss of his speech, he was still able to communicate through a speech generating device, initially through use of a handheld switch, and eventually by using a single cheek muscle. He died on the 14th of March 2018 at the age of 76. Family Hawking was born on the 8th of January 1942 in Oxford to Frank 1905 to 1986 and Isabel Hawking, Nay Walker, 1915 to 2013. His mother was Scottish. Despite their family's financial constraints, both parents attended the University of Oxford, where Frank read medicine and Isabel read philosophy. Politics and economics, the two met shortly after the beginning of the Second World War at a medical research institute where Isabel was working as a secretary and Frank was working as a medical researcher. They lived in Highgate but, as London was being bombed in those years, Isabel went to Oxford to give birth in greater safety. Hawking had two younger sisters, Philippa and Mary, and an adopted brother, Edward. In 1950, when Hawking's father became head of a division of parasitology at the National Institute for Medical Research, Hawking and his family moved to St. Albans, Hertfordshire, in St. Albans. The family were considered highly intelligent and somewhat eccentric. Meals were often spent with each person silently reading a book. They lived a frugal existence in a large, cluttered, and poorly maintained house and traveled in a converted London taxi cab. During one of Hawking's father's frequent absences working in Africa, the rest of the family spent four months in Majorca visiting his mother's friend Beryl and her husband, the poet Robert Graves. examination. 
His family could not afford the school fees without the financial aid of a scholarship, so Hawking remained at St. Albans. A positive consequence was that Hawking remained with a close group of friends with whom he enjoyed board games, the manufacture of fireworks, model aeroplanes and boats, and long discussions about Christianity and extrasensory perception. From 1958 on, with the help of the mathematics teacher Di Crantata, they built a computer from clock parts. An old telephone switchboard and other recycled components. Although known at school as Einstein, Hawking was not initially successful academically, I with time. He began to show considerable aptitude for scientific subjects and, inspired by Tata, he decided to read mathematics at university. Hawking's father advised him to study medicine. Concerned that there were few jobs for mathematics graduates. He also wanted his son to attend University College, Oxford, his own alma mater. As it was not possible to read mathematics there at the time, Hawking decided to study physics and chemistry. Despite his headmaster's advice to wait until the next year, Hawking was awarded a scholarship after taking the examinations in March 1959. Under graduate years, Hawking began his university education at University College, Oxford. In October 1959 at the age of 17, for the first 18 months, he was bored and lonely. He found the academic work ridiculously easy. His physics tutor, Robert Berman, later said, It was only necessary for him to know that something could be done and he could do it without looking to see how other people did it. A change occurred during his second and third year when, according to Berman, Hawking made more of an effort to be one of the boys. He developed into a popular, lively and witty college member, interested in classical music and science fiction. Part of the transformation resulted from his decision to join the College Boat Club, the University College Boat Club, where he coxed a rowing crew. The rowing coach at the time noted that Hawking cultivated a daredevil image, steering his crew on risky courses that led to damaged boats. Hawking estimated that he studied about 1,000 hours during his three years at Oxford. These unimpressive study habits made sitting his finals a challenge and he decided to answer only theoretical physics questions rather than those requiring factual knowledge. A first-class honors degree was a condition of acceptance for his planned graduate study in cosmology at the University of Cambridge. Anxious, he slept poorly the night before the examinations, and the final result was on the borderline between first and second class honors, making a viva oral examination necessary. Hawking was concerned that he was viewed as a lazy and difficult student. So, when asked at the oral to describe his plans, he said, If you award me a first, I will go to Cambridge. If I receive a second, I shall stay in Oxford, so I expect you will give me a first. He was held in higher regard than he believed, as Berman commented. The examiners were intelligent enough to realize they were talking to someone far cleverer than most of themselves. After receiving a first-class BA Hans, degree in natural science and completing a trip to Iran with a friend, he began his graduate work at Trinity Hall, Cambridge, in October 1962. Career 1966 to 1975 in his work, and in collaboration with Penrose, Hawking extended the singularity theorem concepts first explored in his doctoral thesis. This included not only the existence of singularities but also the theory that the universe might have started as a singularity. Their joint essay was the runner-up in the 1968 Gravity Research Foundation competition. In 1970 they published a proof that if the universe obeys the general theory of relativity and fits any of the models of physical cosmology developed by Alexander Friedman, then it must have begun as a singularity. In 1969, Hawking accepted a specially created fellowship for distinction in science to remain at Keyes. In 1970, Hawking postulated what became known as the second law of black hole dynamics, that the event horizon of a black hole can never get smaller. With James M. Bardeen and Brandon Carter, 
He proposed the four laws of black hole mechanics, drawing an analogy with thermodynamics. To Hawking's irritation, Jacob Bekenstein, a graduate student of John Wheeler, went further, and ultimately correctly, to apply thermodynamic concepts literally in the early 1970s. Hawking's work with Carter, Werner Israel, and David C. Robinson strongly supported Wheeler's no-hair theorem, one that states that no matter what the original material from which a black hole is created, it can be completely described by the properties of mass, electrical charge and rotation. His essay titled Black Holes won the Gravity Research Foundation Award in January 1971, Hawking's first book. The Large Scale Structure of Space-Time, written with George Ellis, was published in 1973. Beginning in 1973, Hawking moved into the study of quantum gravity and quantum mechanics, 93. His work in this area was spurred by a visit to Moscow on discussions with Yakov Borisovich Seldovich and Alexei Starobinsky, whose work showed that according to the uncertainty principle, rotating black holes emit particles. To Hawking's annoyance, his much-checked calculations produced findings that contradicted his second law, which claimed black holes could never get smaller, and supported Bekenstein's reasoning about their entropy. His results, which Hawking presented from 1974, showed that black holes emit radiation, known today as Hawking radiation, which may continue until they exhaust their energy and evaporate. Initially, Hawking radiation was controversial, by the late 1970s and following the publication of further research, the discovery was widely accepted as a significant breakthrough in theoretical physics. Hawking was elected a fellow of the Royal Society, FRS, in 1974, a few weeks after the announcement of Hawking radiation. At the time, he was one of the youngest scientists to become a fellow. Hawking was appointed to the Sherman Fairchild Distinguished Visiting Professorship at the California Institute of Technology, Caltech, in 1970. He worked with a friend on the faculty, Kip Thorne, and engaged him in a scientific wager about whether the X-ray source Cygnus X-1 was a black hole. The wager was an insurance policy against the proposition that black holes did not exist. Hawking acknowledged that he had lost the bet in 1990, a bet that was the first of several he was to make with Thorne and others. Hawking had maintained ties to Caltech, spending a month there almost every year since this first visit. Career 1975 to 1990 Hawking returned to Cambridge in 1975 to a more academically senior post as reader in gravitational physics. The mid to late 1970s were a period of growing public interest in black holes and the physicists who were studying them. Hawking was regularly interviewed for print and television. He also received increasing academic recognition of his work in 1975. He was awarded for both the Eddington Medal and the Pius XI Gold Medal. And in 1976, the Danny Heinemann Prize, the Maxwell Prize and the Hughes Medal. He was appointed a professor with a chair in gravitational physics in 1977. The following year, he received the Albert Einstein Medal and an honorary doctorate from the University of Oxford. In the late 1970s, Hawking was elected Lou Casey and Professor of Mathematics at the University of Cambridge. His inaugural lecture as Lou Casey and Professor of Mathematics was titled is the end in sight for theoretical physics, and proposed N equals 8 supergravity as the leading theory to solve many of the outstanding problems physicists were studying. His promotion coincided with a health crisis which led to his accepting, albeit reluctantly, some nursing services at home. At the same time, he was also making a transition in his approach to physics becoming more intuitive and speculative rather than insisting on mathematical proofs. I would rather be right than rigorous, he told Kip Thorne. In 1981, he proposed that information in a black hole is irretrievably lost when a black hole evaporates. This information paradox violates the fundamental tenet of quantum mechanics. 
and led to years of debate, including the Black Hole War with Leonard Susskind and Gerard T. Hooft. Cosmological inflation, a theory proposing that following the Big Bang, the universe initially expanded incredibly rapidly before settling down to a slower expansion, was proposed by Alan Booth and also developed by Andre Lind, following a conference in Moscow in October. 1981, Hawking and Gary Gibbons organized a three-week Nuffield workshop in the summer of 1982 on the very early universe at Cambridge University. A workshop that focused mainly on inflation theory, Hawking also began a new line of quantum theory research into the origin of the universe. In 1981 at a Vatican conference, he presented work suggesting that there might be no boundary, or beginning, or ending, to the universe. He subsequently developed the research in collaboration with Jim Hartle. And in 1983, they published a model, known as the hartle Hawking State. It proposed that prior to the Planck epoch, the universe had no boundary in space-time, before the Big Bang. Time did not exist and the concept of the beginning of the universe is meaningless. The initial singularity of the classical Big Bang models was replaced with region akin to the North Pole. One cannot travel north of the North Pole, but there is no boundary there, it is simply the point where all north running lines meet and end. Initially, the no boundary proposal predicted a closed universe, which had implications about the existence of God. As Hawking explained, if the universe has no boundaries but is self-contained, then God would not have had any freedom to choose how the universe began. Hawking did not rule out the existence of a creator. Asking in a brief history of time, is the unified theory so compelling that it brings about its own existence? In his early work, Hawking spoke of God in a metaphorical sense. In a brief history of time, he wrote, if we discover a complete theory, it would be the ultimate triumph of human reason, for then we should know the mind of God. In the same book, he suggested that the existence of God was not necessary to explain the origin of the universe. Later discussions with Neil Turok led to the realization that the existence of God was also compatible with an open universe. Further work by Hawking in the area of arrows of time led to the 1985 publication of a paper theorizing that if the no boundary proposition were correct, then when the universe stopped expanding and eventually collapsed, time would run backwards. A paper by Don Page and independent calculations by Raymond Lathlon led Hawking to withdraw this concept. Honors continued to be awarded. In 1981, he was awarded the American Franklin Medal. And in the 1982 New Year Honors appointed a commander of the Order of the British Empire, CBE. These awards did not significantly change Hawking's financial status. And motivated by the need to finance his children's education and home expenses, he decided in 1982 to write a popular book about the universe that would be accessible to the general public. Instead of publishing with an academic press, he signed a contract with Bandon Books, a mass market publisher, and received a large advance for his book. A first draft of the book, called A Brief History of Time, was completed in 1984. One of the first messages Hawking produced with his speech generating device was a request for his assistant to help him finish writing a brief history of time. Peter Gazzardi, his editor at Bantam, pushed him to explain his ideas clearly in non-technical language, a process that required many revisions from an increasingly irritated Hawking. The book was published in April 1988 in the US and in June in the UK, and it proved to be an extraordinary success rising quickly to the top of bestseller lists in both countries and remaining there for months. The book was translated into many languages and ultimately sold an estimated 9 million copies. Media attention was intense, and a Newsweek magazine cover and a television special both described him as master of the universe. Success led to significant financial rewards, but also the challenges of celebrity status. Hawking traveled extensively to promote his work, and enjoyed partying and dancing into the small hours. 
A difficulty refusing the invitations and visitors left him limited time for work and his students. Some colleagues were resentful of the attention Hawking received. Feeling it was due to his disability, he received further academic recognition, including five more honorary degrees, the gold medal of the Royal Astronomical Society, 1985, the Paul Dirac Medal, 1987, and, jointly with Penrose, the prestigious Wolf Prize, 1988. In the 1989 birthday honors, he was appointed the Companion of Honor. He reportedly declined a knighthood. to 2000 Hawking pursued his work in physics. In 1993 he co-edited a book on Euclidean quantum gravity with Gary Gibbons and published a collected edition of his own articles on black holes and the Big Bang in 1994. At Cambridge's Newton Institute, Hawking and Penrose delivered a series of six lectures that were published in 1996 as The Nature of Space and Time in 1997. He conceded a 1991 public scientific wager made with Kip Thorne and John Perskill of Caltech. Hawking had bet that Penrose's proposal of a cosmic censorship conjecture that there could be no naked singularities unclothed within a horizon was correct. After discovering his concession might have been premature, a new, more refined wager was made. This one specified that such singularities would occur without extra conditions. The same year, Thorne, Hawking and Preskill made another bet, this time concerning the black hole information paradox. Thorne and Hawking argued that since general relativity made it impossible for black holes to radiate and lose information, the mass energy and information carried by Hawking radiation must be new and not from inside the black hole event horizon. Since this contradicted the quantum mechanics of microcausality, quantum mechanics theory would need to be rewritten. Preskill argued the opposite, that since quantum mechanics suggests that the information emitted by a black hole relates to information that fell in at an earlier time. The concept of black holes given by general relativity must be modified in some way. Hawking also maintained his public profile, including bringing science to a wider audience. A film version of A Brief History of Time, directed by Errol Morris and produced by Steven Spielberg, premiered in 1992. Hawking had wanted the film to be scientific rather than biographical, but he was persuaded otherwise. The film, while a critical success, was not widely released, a popular level collection of essays, interviews, and talks titled Black Holes in Baby Universes and Other Essays was published in 1993, and a six-part television series Stephen Hawking's Universe and a Companion Book appeared in 1997. As Hawking insisted, this time the focus was entirely on science. 2000-2018 Hawking continued his writings for a popular audience. Publishing the Universe in a Nutshell in 2001, and A Briefer History of Time, which he wrote in 2005 with Leonard Malode now to update his earlier works with the aim of making them accessible to a wider audience, and God created the Imagers which appeared in 2006, along with Thomas Hertog at CERN and Jim Hartle, from 2006 on Hawking developed a theory of top-down cosmology, which says that the universe had not one unique initial state but many different ones, and therefore that it is inappropriate to formulate a theory that predicts the universe's current configuration from one particular initial state. Top-down cosmology posits that the present selects the past from a superposition of many possible histories. In doing so, the theory suggests a possible resolution of the fine-tuning question. Hawking continued to travel widely, including trips to Chile, Easter Island, South Africa, Spain, to receive the Fonseca Prize in 2008. Canada and numerous trips to the United States, for practical reasons related to his disability, Hawking increasingly traveled by private jet. And by 2011 that had become his only mode of international travel. By 2003, consensus among physicists was growing that Hawking was wrong about the loss of information in a black hole. 
In a 2004 lecture in Dublin, he conceded his 1997 bet with Prisco, but described his own somewhat controversial solution to the information paradox problem, involving the possibility that black holes have more than one topology. In the 2005 paper he published on the subject, he argued that the information paradox was explained by examining all the alternative histories of universes with the information loss and those with black holes being cancelled out by those without such loss. In January 2014, he called the alleged loss of information in black holes his biggest blunder. As part of another long-standing scientific dispute, Hawking had emphatically argued and bet that the Higgs boson would never be found. The particle was proposed to exist as part of the Higgs field theory by Peter Higgs in 1964. Hawking and Higgs engaged in a heated and public debate over the matter in 2002 and again in 2008. With Higgs criticizing Hawking's work and complaining that Hawking's celebrity status gives him instant credibility that others do not have. The particle was discovered in July 2012 at CERN. Following construction of the Large Hadron Collider, Hawking quickly conceded that he had lost his bet and said that Higgs should win the Nobel Prize for Physics, which he did in 2013. In 2007, Hawking and his daughter Lucy published George's Secret Key to the Universe, a children's book designed to explain theoretical physics in an accessible fashion and featuring characters similar to those in the Hawking family. The book was followed by sequels in 2009, 2011 and 2014. In 2002, following a UK-wide vote, the BBC included Hawking in their list of the 100 Greatest Britons. He was awarded the Copley Medal from the Royal Society, 2006. The Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is America's highest civilian honor, 2009, and the Russian Special Fundamental Physics Prize, 2013. Several buildings have been named after him, including the Stephen W. Hawking Science Museum in San Salvador, El Salvador, the Stephen Hawking Building in Cambridge, and the Stephen Hawking Center at the Perimeter Institute in Canada. Appropriately, given Hawking's association with time, he unveiled the mechanical chronophage or time-eating corpus clock at Corpus Christi College, Cambridge in September 2008. During his career, Hawking supervised 39 successful PhD students. One doctoral student did not successfully complete their PhD, as required by Cambridge University regulations. Hawking retired as Lou Casey and Professor of Mathematics in 2009, despite suggestions that he might leave the United Kingdom as a protest against public funding cuts to basic scientific research. Hawking worked as Director of Research at the Cambridge University Department of Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics on the 28th of June 2009. As a tongue-in-cheek test of his 1992 conjecture that travel into the past is effectively impossible, Hawking held a party open to all, complete with hors d'oeuvres and iced champagne, but publicized the party only after it was over so that only time travelers would know to attend, as expected, nobody showed up to the party. On the 20th of July 2015, Hawking helped launch breakthrough initiatives in effort to search for extraterrestrial life. Hawking created Stephen Hawking, Expedition New Earth, a documentary on space colonization. As a 2017 episode of Tomorrow's World, in August 2015, Hawking said that not all information is lost when something enters a black hole and there might be a possibility to retrieve information from a black hole according to his theory. In July 2017, Hawking was awarded an honorary doctorate from Imperial College London. Personal life marriages When Hawking was a graduate student at Cambridge, his relationship with Jane Wilde, a friend of his sister whom he had met shortly before his late 1963 diagnosis with motor neurone disease, continued to develop. 
The couple became engaged in October 1964. Hawking later said that the engagement gave him something to live for, and the two were married on the 14th of July 1965. During their first years of marriage, Jane lived in London during the week as she completed her degree, and they traveled to the United States several times for conferences and physics-related visits. The couple had difficulty finding housing that was within Hawking's walking distance to the Department of Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics. Jane began a PhD program, and a son, Robert, was born in May 1967. A daughter, Lucy, was born in 1972. Her third child, Timothy, was born in April 1979. Hawking rarely discussed his illness and physical challenges. Even in a precedent set during their courtship with Jane, his disabilities meant that the responsibilities of home and family rested firmly on his wife's increasingly overwhelmed shoulders, leaving him more time to think about physics. Upon his appointment in 1974 to a year-long position at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, California, Jane proposed that a graduate or postdoctoral student live with him and help with his care. Hawking accepted, and Bernard Carr traveled with them as the first of many students who fulfilled this role. The family spent a generally happy and stimulating year in Pasadena. Hawking returned to Cambridge in 1975 to a new home and a new job as reader. Don Page, with whom Hawking had begun a close friendship at Caltech, arrived to work as the live-in graduate student assistant, with Page's help and that of a secretary. Jane's responsibilities were reduced so she could return to her thesis and her new interest in singing. By December 1977, Jane had met organist Jonathan Hellyer Jones when singing in a church choir. Hellyer Jones became close to the Hawking family, and by the mid-1980s, he and Jane had developed romantic feelings for each other. According to Jane, her husband was accepting of the situation stating, he would not object so long as I continued to love him. Jane and Hellyer Jones determined not to break up the family, and their relationship remained platonic for a long period. By the 1980s, Hawking's marriage had been strained for many years. Jane felt overwhelmed by the intrusion into their family life of the required nurses and assistants. The impact of his celebrity was challenging for colleagues and family members, while the prospect of living up to a worldwide fairy tale image was daunting for the couple. Hawking's views of religion also contrasted with her strong Christian faith and resulted in tension. In the late 1980s, Hawking had grown close to one of his nurses, Elaine Mason. To the dismay of some colleagues, caregivers, and family members, who were disturbed by her strength of personality and protectiveness, Hawking told Jane that he was leaving her for Mason and departed the family home in February 1990 after his divorce from Jane in 1995. Hawking married Mason in September, declaring, It's wonderful, I have married the woman I love. In 1999, Jane Hawking published a memoir, Music to Move the Stars, Describing her marriage to Hawking and its breakdown, its revelations caused a sensation in the media but, as was his usual practice regarding his personal life, Hawking made no public comment except to say that he did not read biographies about himself after his second marriage. Hawking's family felt excluded and marginalized from his life. For a period of about five years in the early 2000s, his family and staff became increasingly worried that he was being physically abused. Police investigations took place, but were closed as Hawking refused to make a complaint. In 2006, Hawking and Mason quietly divorced, and Hawking resumed closer relationships with Jane, his children, and his grandchildren. Reflecting this happier period, a revised version of Jane's book called Traveling to Infinity, My Life with Stephen appeared in 2007 and was made into a film, The Theory of Everything, in 2014. Disability Hawking had a rare early onset slow progressing form of motor neuron disease, also known as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and Lou Gehrig's disease. 
that gradually paralyzed him over the decades. Hawking had experienced increasing clumsiness during his final year at Oxford, including a fall on some stairs and difficulties when rowing. The problems worsened, and his speech became slightly slurred and his family noticed the changes when he returned home for Christmas and medical investigations were begun. The diagnosis of motor neurone disease came when Hawking was 21, in 1963. At the time, doctors gave him a life expectancy of two years in the late 1960s, Hawking's physical abilities declined. He began to use crutches and cease lecturing regularly. As he slowly lost the ability to write, he developed compensatory visual methods, including seeing equations in terms of geometry. The physicist Werner Israel later compared the achievements to Mozart composing an entire symphony in his head. Hawking was fiercely independent and unwilling to accept help or make concessions for his disabilities. He preferred to be regarded as a scientist first, popular science writer second, and in all the ways that matter, a normal human being with the same desires, drives, dreams, and ambitions as the next person, his wife, Jane Hawking, later noted. Some people would call it determination, some obstinacy. I've called it both at one time or another, he required much persuasion to accept the use of a wheelchair at the end of the 1960s. But ultimately became notorious for the wildness of his wheelchair driving. Hawking was a popular and witty colleague, but his illness, as well as his reputation for brashness, distanced him from some. Hawking's speech deteriorated, and by the late 1970s he could be understood by only his family and closest friends. To communicate with others, someone who knew him well would interpret his speech into intelligible speech, spurred by a dispute with a university over who would pay for the ramp needed for him to enter his workplace. Hawking and his wife campaigned for improved access and support for those with disabilities in Cambridge, including adapted student housing at the university, in general. Hawking had ambivalent feelings about his role as a disability rights champion. While wanting to help others, he also sought to detach himself from his illness and its challenges. His lack of engagement in this area led to some criticism. During a visit to CERN on the border of France and Switzerland in mid-1985, Hawking contracted pneumonia, which in his condition was life-threatening. He was told that Jane was asked if life support should be terminated. She refused, but the consequence was a tracheotomy, which would require round-the-clock nursing care and remove what remained of his speech. The National Health Service was ready to pay for a nursing home. But Jane was determined that he would live at home. The cost of the care was funded by an American foundation. Nurses were hired for the three shifts required to provide the round-the-clock support he required. One of those employed was Elaine Mason, who was to become Hawking's second wife. For his communication, Hawking initially raised his eyebrows to choose letters on a spelling card, but in 1986, he received a computer program called The Equalizer from Walter Waltis, CEO of Words Plus, who had developed an earlier version of the software to help his mother-in-law, who also suffered from ALS and had lost her ability to speak and write. In a method he used for the rest of his life, Hawking can now simply press a switch to select phrases. Words are letters from a bank of about 2,500 minus 3,000 that were scanned. The program was originally run on a desktop computer. Elaine Mason's husband, David, a computer engineer, adapted a small computer and attached it to his wheelchair, released from the need to use somebody to interpret his speech. Hawking commented that I can communicate better now than before I lost my voice. The voice he used had an American accent and is no longer produced. Despite the later availability of other voices, Hawking retained this original voice, saying that he preferred it and identified with it originally. Hawking activated a switch using his hand and could produce up to 15 words a minute. Lectures were prepared in advance and were sent to the speech synthesizer in short sections to be delivered. Hawking gradually
quickly lost their use of his hand, and in 2005, he began to control his communication device with movements of his cheek muscles. With a rate of about one word per minute, with this decline, there was a risk of his developing Lockton syndrome. So Hawking collaborated with Intel researchers on systems that could translate his brain patterns or facial expressions into switch activations. After several prototypes that did not perform as planned, they settled on an adaptive word predictor made by the London-based startup SwiftKey, which used a system similar to his original technology. Hawking had an easier time adapting to the new system, which was further developed after inputting large amounts of Hawking's papers and other written materials and uses to a predictive software similar to other smartphone keyboards. By 2009 he could no longer drive his wheelchair independently, but the same people who created his new typing mechanics were working on a method to drive his chair using movements made by his chin. This proved difficult, since Hawking could not move his neck and trials showed that while he could indeed drive the chair, the movement was sporadic and jumpy. Near the end of his life, he was experiencing increased breathing difficulties requiring a ventilator at times and was hospitalized several times. Disability outreach starting in the 1990s. Hawking accepted the mantle of role model for disabled people, lecturing and participating in fundraising activities. At the turn of the century, he and 11 other luminaries signed the Charter for the Third Millennium on Disability, which called on governments to prevent disability and protect the rights of the disabled. In 1999, Hawking was awarded the Julius Edgar Lillian Bell Prize of the American Physical Society. In August 2012, Hawking narrated the Enlightenment segment of the 2012 Summer Paralympics opening ceremony in London. In 2013, the biographical documentary film Hawking, in which Hawking himself is featured, was released. In September 2013, he expressed support for the legalization of assisted suicide for the terminally ill. In August 2014, Hawking accepted the Ice Bucket Challenge to promote ALS, MND awareness and raise contributions for research. As he had pneumonia in 2013, he was advised not to have ice poured over him. But his children volunteered to accept the challenge on his behalf. Plans for a trip to space Hawking, without his wheelchair, floating weightless in the air inside a plane in late 2006. Hawking revealed in an interview with BBC that one of his greatest unfulfilled desires was to travel to space, on hearing this. Richard Branson offered him a free flight into space with Virgin Galactic, which Hawking immediately accepted. Besides personal ambition, he was motivated by the desire to increase public interest in spaceflight and to show the potential of people with disabilities. On the 26th of April 2007, Hawking flew aboard a specially modified Boeing 727-200 jet operated by Zero G Corp off the coast of Florida to experience weightlessness. Fears the maneuvers would cause some undue discomfort proved groundless, and the flight was extended to eight parabolic arcs. It was described as a successful test to see if he could withstand the G-forces involved in space flight. At the time, the date of Hawking's trip to space was projected to be as early as 2009. However, commercial flights to space did not commence before his death. Death Hawking died at his home in Cambridge, England, early in the morning of the 14th of March 2018, at the age of 76. His family stated that he died peacefully. He was eulogized by figures in science, entertainment, politics, and other areas. The college flag at Cambridge's Gongville and Keyes College flew at half-mast and a book of condolences was signed by students and visitors.